confident. So Balaam was open again to being used by God and the devil. He was just open. He was just a willing vessel just being used by whoever, right? So as I think about the doctrine of Balaam and when we talk about in Revelations how the how how the Lord says you have people there who hold the doctrine of Balaam. We know that Balaam was in rebellion. And not only was he in rebellion, he was a sorcerer and then he never repented and turned away from his sorcery. So he um, was being used by God and the devil. So, and when you look at the word doctrine, a doctrine is a belief, a set of beliefs or, um, a belief or set of beliefs held or taught by whoever. So a doctrine is a belief. So what is the doctrine of Balaam? The doctrine of Balaam are those that believe that it is okay it is okay for you to live for God and to live for the devil at the same time. The doctrine of Balaam is those that feel like it's okay. Well, they don't just feel like it. They actually believe. They actually believe that it, it is okay for them to go to church, to read the Bible, to proclaim Christ and do all these spiritual things. And then at the same time, be living a completely contrary, immoral life all on the side. They, be, they are saved on Sunday. And they have a whole separate lifestyle from Monday to Saturday. Or maybe it's saved on Monday and in different lifestyle on Wednesday. But it is the, the doctrine of Balaam is that it is okay for you to be, um, that for you to serve God and serve the devil at the same time, right? So that's the doctrine of Balaam. That's what the scripture said, because that is what Balaam did. Balaam was, was, was doing both, right? He was, he was a sorcerer and then he, and he never stopped. He never stopped. And then I was even, I'm not even going to go into that. But, um, another thing that the Lord showed me was that Balaam came into the knowledge of his sin. So it wasn't like he was in darkness and he didn't know what he was doing was wrong. When Balaam was on the way to this prophecy, the Lord spoke to him. He saw the, the Lord opened up his eyes when he saw the angel. Um, you guys have to read the story. But anyways, on his way, he was on the donkey. This is the story that where the donkey speaks. So that was Balaam in whom the donkey, who God used the donkey to speak to Balaam. But anyways, the scripture says that the Lord opened his eyes and he saw his own sin. He saw that his ways was perverse before the Lord, but he still didn't repent in turn. He still continued to use sorcery. And even after that happened, after he pronounced that blessing on the children of Israel, Balak was angry. And so what Balaam did is he told, um, Balak to get the children, the, the women of Moab to go and seduce the men in the Israel's camp. So he's like, he, so in other words, he like, I can't pronounce that blessing on them. I mean, the curse on them, but what I can do is show you how to get them to fall into sin. So in other words, it'll kind of be like the same thing. So he taught Balak, which was the king to get the women of Moab to go and sleep with the men in the in the camp of Israel and that's exactly what happened that's what that's what happened with the story so going back to um revelation so he says uh so he says that I have this against you because you have those there that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Okay, so again, the doctrine of Balaam is those that, that believe it's okay for them to live two separate lives or, or for them to be proclaiming, uh, you know what I mean, going to church, you know, saying that you, you, you reading the Bible, 
talking about Jesus, and then yet you're not living according to the word of God. You're living something completely different, and you think that it's okay. You think it's okay, like you don't have to, or, you know, I don't have to change, or it's okay, and they say things like, oh, it's okay, oh, it's not that big of a deal, you know, God knows my heart, and God understands what I'm going through, and one day I'm gonna get it together, like if they're confronted with it, oh, it's okay, is is that type of mentality, it's the mentality of you're doing all of this and you think it's okay. And you also have the mentality that you think that you're not, you're going to get away with it. Because even if you know it's wrong, because they may have the, the acknowledgement that it's wrong, but you still don't want to change. You still don't want to change your ways. And so you think that you're going to get away with it. But let's look at what um, the Lord says. Okay. So we understand that Balaam taught uh, the women to go, taught Balak to have the women go on Israel, okay? So the other part of it is they also become a stumbling block. So it says that they don't want to change. They like it, right? And they enjoy it. So they enjoy what they're doing, those that hold the doctrine of Balaam, and they also become a stumbling block, which means they and they they become something that causes other people to fall. So because you don't want to change, because you live in this lifestyle and you're not living right, you are setting a bad example for others and you're causing them to fall into sin because of what you're doing. And then also, not only that, you're enticing people.